Good morning, PW. I'm Clayton Allen. And I'm Aaron Bailey. And these are your iBlock announcements. Continental Magazine is now accepting submissions of poetry, artwork, and photography, or short stories. Drop off submissions in the folder outside of room 30, or email them to mcanny at colonialsd.org. The deadline for submissions is January 18th. This is a reminder for all seniors retaking the PSSA test. Passes for you will be sent to your iBlock teacher on Thursday morning, reminding you of your retake test. And Votech students taking the test should report to PW on Monday and Tuesday, October 22nd and 23rd. If you have any questions, see your counselor or Mrs. Savage in room 13. Attention PSA test takers, students who have registered and are taking the PSAT on Saturday, October 20th must know their assigned room numbers upon arriving. Students should check with their iBlock teachers for their assigned room numbers. Important reminders, bring a calculator, two number two pencils, and arrive by 8.20 a.m. and report to Cafe East. Allow three hours for testing time. For anyone interested in playing varsity or JV baseball, there is a meeting in room 300 during iBlock on Friday, October 19th. That's today, so you should be there. Reminder to all junior girls who ordered a powder puff shirt that the cost is $21 and is due to Mrs. Genovese by Halloween. You will not get your shirt if you don't pay for it. Checks are written to the class of 2014. There will be a meeting, mandatory meeting for DECA this Friday, October 19th during iBlock in Cafe West, so you should be there right now. All members must be present. If you cannot attend, you must speak with me, either Mr. Blair or Mrs. Callagher prior to the meeting today. No. And that's all for the announcements. Until later, uh, now we'll go over to international news after this quick message on breakfast. Good morning, PW. I'm Louis Wine with a look at your international news. The man that caused mayhem and panic at sea appeared in court on Monday. The captain of the Costa Concordia, the cruise ship that crashed into an Italian reef, heard the evidence against him. The case of Francisco Satino was so full of interest that a theater had to be turned into a courtroom in the Tuscan city of Grosseto to accommodate the hundreds who had legitimate claims to be at the closed-door hearing over the disaster. Dozens of e experts, lawyers, and prosecutors packed the building while all eyes were on Satino as he returned to Tuscany for the first time since his arrest. He's accused of manslaughter, causing the shipwreck, and abandoning ship while passengers and crew were still aboard. Monday's hearing was the first and most important in the preliminary trial aimed at establishing who to incite over the disaster. Satino commanded the Costa Concordia to get closer to the island of Giglio to salute the islanders. The ship got too close and tore a 160-foot gash into the starboard side of the ship. He then jumped ship to get into a lifeboat. He defends that he fell over into a lifeboat. 32 passengers died during the crash. Many questioned whether the crew had the necessary training to deal with a disaster. The 270-page report written by Marine Time experts reveals that the captain abandoned the Costa Concordia hours before the last of the passengers reached safety. It also says that Cicino was slow in issuing an abandoned ship order and alerting port authorities. Crews are supposed to perform an evacuation drill during the first hours aboard a ship, and the Costa Concordia Concordia did not partake in one. Also, not all the crew members understood Italian, the operating language of the liner. Satino later admitted during the preliminary trial that he was distracted by a phone call at the time that the ship capsized. He also made a statement saying he does not accept the full guilt for the accident. Italian's top appeals court ruled on Wednesday that Fr Francisco Santino was unfit to command the cruise liner. The real trial could take up to another year until it goes underway. Meanwhile, the wreckage of the ship uh, still sits atop the reef off the island of Giglio. Crews are working diligently to get the ship moved. It could be another year until the ship is able to be floated away for scrap. Multiple people are injured following an incident involving a car and a freight train Friday morning. The train hit a car carrying multiple passengers just after 9 a.m. at the intersection of West Chestnut and South Broad Street in Clayton, New Jersey. Witnesses say that one person was transported to Cooper University Hospital, but multiple people from the car that were hit are injured. No word on how many were in the car or what caused the ac accident. We'll keep you updated as we know more information. 
Newsweek is going out of print and all in one digital. The magazine will keep publishing online as a single world worldwide edition called Newsweek Global with the shift to an all digital format after 80 years in print, set to start early in 2013. That's all for your national news. For, for more updates, follow us at, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at CITV Students. I'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend, PW. And now for some Good other morning. school news. Attention all juniors going on the Hershey Park trip. Remember to bring a lunch to eat on the bus if you are taking the PSATs. It will be cold at night, so bring a jacket or other warm clothing. You will need money for dinner besides the park, inside the park. Buses will be leaving the back parking lot at 12.30. We ask that you be there by 12.15. We will be leaving Hershey at around 9 p.m. and should arrive back at PW around 11. Be sure that your ride will be here so you can go home. Also, for all juniors, our first Florida fundraiser will begin next Thursday. Also next Thursday during iBlock, we'll be taking a class picture on the football field for the yearbook. College visits for Friday, October 19th, Immaculata University at 115. Be sure to stop by the College Counseling Office to obtain a pass. All students interested in traveling to England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales this summer with People to People, you should attend an informational meeting on Saturday, October 20th at 1 p.m. at Colonial Middle School. Please see Ms. LaFermina or Mr. Morrow with any questions. More college visits for our Monday, October 22nd, Claron University at 945. Be sure to visit the College Counseling Office to obtain a pass. And now we'll be going to a, a PSA on breakfast and then after the weather. Dave eats breakfast every morning to prepare for his daily challenges. John, on the other hand, never eats before class. He shows up late and sometimes not at all. As you can see, he has trouble performing well in school, unlike Dave, who receives straight A's. Here at PW, we know the negatives of skipping breakfast, so your school provides it for you. A full breakfast is only $2.10. This includes the made item along with milk. You also can get either a fruit or juice. Some of the healthier choices include whole wheat or low fat items. Make your way over to Cafe West where every day of the week they make a different breakfast. Five seconds, three, two, one, two days. Heavy rain and thunderstorms are impacting the region. I am David Wynn with a look at how much longer the rain will last. We'll take a look at the latest temperatures and satellite image, and you can see that currently we are in the upper 60s at this hour for a temperature at 64 degrees. However, I do want to take our attention out to central Pennsylvania and notice how temperatures are only in the mid-40s and lower 50s. That's because the cold front has moved through these areas already, and you can clearly see that the cold front is located just to our west at this hour. We'll take a look at the latest radar image and look at all the heavy rain that is currently over our region. We have showers and embedded thunderstorms pushing off to the northeast at this hour, which is why we're seeing some very heavy rainfall at times. But notice that we have a sharp cutoff to the west, and as the cold front continues to push off to the east, I do expect the rain to taper off as we head towards noon. Now, we'll take a look at the bigger picture and notice how huge this storm is. You can see that here's all the heavy rain moving through our region at this hour with the cold front located to the west of that with clearing taking place. But notice here's the area of low pressure as we have this really big upper level low spinning over the Great Lakes region. And underneath that area of low pressure, we have a big pocket of cold air that will affect the region over the next two days. But I am expecting a big warm up as we head into next week. We'll take a look at the latest surface map and you can see that here's that cold front pushing off to the east as the upper level low continues to spin over the Great Lakes region. But we'll take a look at the future cast. And as we head through this weekend and into next week, 
high pressure will begin to build over the Gulf of Mexico, and this will continue to pro uh, progress off to the northeast as we head through next week, causing temperatures to warm all the way up into the mid-70s as we head towards the middle of the week. We'll take a look at your seven-day forecast, and today expect a.m. rain with a high of 75 and a low of 53. Saturday will be breezy with a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 66 and a low of 45. Sunday will be mostly sunny with a high of 64 and a low of 45. Monday will also be mostly sunny with a high of 68 and a low of 48. Tuesday, expect a mix of sun and clouds with rain possible in the evening with a high of 72 and a low of 54. Wednesday will also be partly cloudy with a high of 73 and a low of 53. And Thursday will be mostly sunny with a high of 72. That is all for today. For High Block News, I am Dave Wynn. Have a great day. Thanks for watching, PW. I'm Aaron Bailey. And I'm Clayton Allen. That was David Wynn. This is Louie Wine. Thanks for watching, PW. Have a great weekend.